you can see there, look what we have. We have a whole bunch of lions lying on the nice warm tarmac on this very cold, blustery morning. And isn't that a nice surprise? So what we have is the sticks with two little cubs, so two females from the sticks. And then there's Nena in the middle there. That is one of the Birmingham boys. And he's busy having a very big nap. And then to my... Oh, look at all the swallows, Dave. Look at that. It's amazing. There's a whole flock of swallows over these lines. I cannot tell you how amazing this looks. There's just thousands of birds, lions, grey clouds, windy. It is quite a scene that is here at the moment. Absolutely spectacular. Wow, you can hear the swallows. Listen to them. So these are all the barn swallows. And I think they're gathering to start heading back north again. These guys are going to be going up into southern Europe and North Africa. So they are gathering with this change of weather before they start heading back. But look at that picture. Isn't that amazing? Now, I know they are lying on tar, which is not the best part of it. But those sort of dead trees in the background, the lions all lying there, the grey clouds. It is really very, very, very special. Now, these are not the only lions that we actually have here, which is quite cool. Over my shoulder, which is behind me that way, we have in the grass there, you can see Birmingham number two, which I'm not sure which one it is yet because of his head, and Birmingham number three. So I said this morning I wanted to see all four Birminghams together as a third option, and I suppose three out of four is not a bad way. And if we throw the two sticks in and two cubs, I suppose that makes another Birmingham, so we can just call it that we saw all of them. And it is a spectacular sighting. I'm very, very, very chuffed that we managed to catch up with all of them. And they all look as though they are quite sleepy. The sticks have nice full bellies, which means that I don't think they're going to go anywhere today. So this afternoon I'm definitely going to come back here, or this evening should I say, and hopefully we'll get a little bit more action out of them. But isn't this amazing? So, like I say, it is cat today, and I don't know if there's a better way with three big male lions, two little fat cubs, and two beautiful females. So for all of you out there that always celebrates Cat Day with us, it would be nice to hear from you. And we can send through any sort of comments that you have or questions that you have about them to hashtag Safari Live and we'll answer all your Cat Day questions. James, well I don't know if I've ever got all the Cat Day luck, but I suppose we have. I mean that jackal sighting was absolutely incredible. These swallows are quite something too. The massive swallows that is on this runway that keep flying over these lines is really incredible. And then to top it all off, to have the lions lying around and the Birminghams. I actually can't remember the last time I saw more than one Birmingham. I was telling Dave that I haven't seen a Birmingham boy this month. And I've only seen the Birmingham, one Birmingham boy in my entire time at Safari Live. So that is now two months and I've only seen one sighting of a Birmingham boy. I've followed their tracks a lot, but I haven't seen them, which is really a bit disconcerting. So I'm so glad that I've actually got to catch up with them. Now, the one that is lying in amongst those lions and behind this reclining lady of leisure is Nena, which is my favorite of the four of them. He is a beautiful male. He's got a really incredible mane. His mane tends to stand really tall. It's interesting because most of the lions that I've seen that have had really long manes, particularly on top of their head, the mane tends to flop and tends to fall a little bit. Whereas his is almost straight up like somebody has permed his head and permed his hair and he's got this kind of big sort of mane that fluffs out off the top of his head. So he's really is my favorite of the four of them. Now I'm hoping that maybe Mfumo is here as well because I haven't seen him. The last time I saw Mfumo was when he had that massive gash underneath his eye and that must have been in October maybe, somewhere around there, September. So I haven't seen him since then. So I'm really dying to see what he looks like and if, how much bigger he's gotten. If the other Birmingham boys are something to judge by, he's definitely put on a bit of weight. But those little cubs, look at them, they are absolutely comatose. And with bellies like that, no wonder. Look at the size of that tummy. It is bulging. And look at that. There you go. You can see that tummy is huge. Now there is one Styx female missing and I'm sure she's with her cubs. Remember the Styx have new cubs. We haven't seen them yet, but they were born just before Tropical Storm Deneo, so that was when? Beginning of the month? Somewhere around there. So they're still very, very little, and that's why they're not with the pride yet. They're not moving around. So you'll find that that female probably um, ate with these uh, adults and with the cub, and then now she's gone back to her cubs to go and suckle and provide some nutrients for them. So that's why she's missing. 
but those little cubs look really good considering that they've had this main story and the sticks were the subject to a lot of controversy in fact sorry there's the third female at the back i don't even know why i'm saying there's only two females there's all three are here sorry about that um completely forgot there was one lying behind the birmingham she's kind of hidden behind there but now i see her tail sticking out there we go um so they have had this whole saga with the the mange and you can see the adult females are looking healthy I mean, they've really bounced back quite well and so have those cubs those cubs are not looking nearly as bad as what they were and these are the new sets so these are not the ones that really suffered from the mange during the drought but they did have it for a little bit and they really don't look too bad at all in fact they they look really good and when their tummies are really full like this and we're getting rainy conditions that can only mean positive signs for these cubs which is really good so I'm super glad about that. The Sticks Pride needs a bit of a break in their luck. They need to be able to start producing some cubs because otherwise, shortly, they're going to disappear. Michael, you're wondering if I know the ages of the six lionesses. Michael, I'm actually not sure. The Styx lionesses, I used to know them very, very well. And then we kind of went through a period where there was a bit of chaos. Lots of the members were lost and since then i actually am not sure but i can kind of roughly guess the ages there's one of the females is quite old so she's must be i would say 10 11 um and then she's got another female that they tend to stick together and that she must also be quite close to that about nine or ten i would imagine both of them are quite heavily scarred around the faces they've got quite tatty ears so they would be about that age and then i think there's one that's a little bit younger at around eight but I'm sure some of the viewers will be able to help me and will know the exact ages of these Styx Lionesses. During my time at Simambili, I hardly saw them, to be honest. We saw them very, very seldom. Most of what we saw was the Salala Pride. So I kind of lost contact a little bit with the ages and who exactly is alive at this stage and how old they are. But I would imagine they're between sort of 8 and 10, 8 and 11, all three of them. That is, I suppose if it's a windy, cloudy day, this is perfect weather to have a nap. White Lady Owen, you're wondering if the lioness closest to me is pregnant. Well, no, that is just a tummy full of meat. So she's absolutely massive because they've eaten something. So whatever they ate, it must have been fairly reasonable because you can see even the Birmingham boy has got a slight bump on his tummy. Um, so I reckon they must have killed something quite big. I don't know if anybody's actually seen our zebra that was injured. I wonder if maybe they didn't grab that zebra and ate that last night and then finished it off because the tracks for the males come from Gauri Dam. Two males walked past there, so that's the two that are probably lying off to the side that joined. And maybe these guys found our zebra and ate it. And would be enough to fill all of those bellies, that's for sure. But isn't that lion absolutely magnificent? Look at his mane and look at how it's starting to go dark. You can see one of the telltale signs that, well, one of the ways I always identify Nena is with his black stripe down the middle of his head. Although he seems to have gotten quite a few scars recently. But he's got that black sort of mohawk stripe down the head. Um, that always is quite useful for me. But his whole mane has darkened considerably since the last time I saw him. He used to have a very blonde mane. But it's now gone a more ginger color. And you can see around the chest area it's even starting to go a bit darker as well. So we're going to sit here and we're just going to enjoy this beautiful sight of these lions all together. And while we do that, let's go across to Miss McCurdy and see what she's up to.